Hello again, and welcome back. So this is the first day of the 30 challenges. So I'm just getting everything ready up here. I decided to stream to while I was doing my work. So you're just getting the stream ready, so people can watch me what I'm doing. They can talk to me, you know, try and understand what I'm doing, so I can explain it to people as well. And you know, just have a quite a chill study session, challenge session, you know. So getting that all ready, and then well, I'll decide what I'm doing. I'm adding progress and notes and stuff to Notion. So on the left I have a task list, which are, these ones are just the easy tasks at the moment. So I've got about 12 of these which I can do, and I was trying to figure out which one I want to go with. I decided to go with rock, paper, scissors. So the computer would, it would be able to choose rock, paper, scissors, and that would be done by randomly generating three numbers, assigning those numbers to rock, paper, scissors. It would generate a number between zero and two, and depending on what that is, it will give you a return. So you could also put your input as well, because you're playing against the computer. And if those conditions are the same, so if you have rock and rock, then it'll be a tie. If it's paper and rock, then you know whoever put paper one, you know, basic rock, paper, scissors. Now, I have a very large tendency to overcomplicate what I'm doing. So I actually have this really weird way of going with a list to try and do it, because you've got rock, paper, and scissors. And if you think about it, Rock beats scissors, scissors beats paper, paper beats rock. And that's just rock, paper, scissors in reverse order. <laughs> scissors, paper, rock, right? If I have that in a list and then reverse that list, that's the priority order in which what beats what. And I was thinking I could use that to be the game rules, you know, like how you determine whether something beats something else. And then I was thinking, that's a bit complicated and probably a very stupid and long way of doing it. And then um, I was like, okay, so how should I do this? And I'm pretty sure I decided to go with randomly generating numbers, which is what I have to do. And then allowing you to put your input in. I don't want to check whether the user's input is a string which matches the computer's input because I was using the computer's input as numerical values. So I converted the user's input into numerical values. <laughs> so I had to hard code that it was very annoying because I could get the user's input, check whether it was something, but I couldn't make it return, like change the value to something else. The way I actually did that was using an if statement, but then it wouldn't work, so I changed it to using cases instead. So once I got that working, I added a default as well. So that way I could detect if no valid input was there, because otherwise, if I didn't have the default or any way to catch it, you put the wrong character in, you put the wrong spelling wrong, or just a bunch of gibberish, it will just you know, it would crash, it would stop working. And from there, the idea was to try and figure out what, what is correct and what's wrong. And my idea for that was to use logical operators. So if it's paper and rock, then whoever put paper would win. And if it's rock and scissors, whoever put rock would win. And if it's rock and rock, paper and paper, etc., then it's a tie. I had a counter at the top, which is for amount of games, how I many rounds have been played. And then I had another counter, which is for each individual player's score. This would increment as the user gains, user or computer gains points. As that went on, I was creating a bunch of conditional statements, which was just making the code way too long and I guess ridiculous to read. Like I had a bunch of if statements at the beginning, which I had to change to cases, and then for the conditional like logic operations, I would have had four or so lines of if statements or maybe even more to try and get it working. So I was like, Java lets you do it in one line. So I was like, okay, I'll do it in one line. So I did it for if the computer's getting a point, that's all one line, and then same for if the user is getting a point, get it one line. It, it just makes everything, in this case, more readable, but more presentable, and it, it feels a lot nicer. You know, it's more satisfi satisfying for my brain. <laughs> so I went with that. Now, I had a few issues on the way. For example, I'm new to Java and I kept forgetting some things need brackets and some things don't. So for the cases, I was treating it by using the curly brackets instead of a colon and it wouldn't work and I was like really confused why. So I had to do some research into why the, how the cases are structured. With the while loop, that worked fine, except it kept going on forever. <laughs> I got the while loop to stop, but then my if statements wouldn't run. And it turns out because I forgot something. I forgot to remove the break from the line above. 
So my code would just stop at that point and it wouldn't run the code below. And that was a bit of an issue because you know, I need that. So I got to the break and I got most of my code working. And now this is the point where I was thinking, okay, everything's actually coming together now. I've got logic operations going. I've got the cases all working. I've got account going. Okay, this is going great. So I was like, I was walking through, you know, trying to explain to my viewers what I'm doing. Some of them can probably code already, so they probably knew what I was doing and probably think I'm really stupid, but you know, that's okay. Because, you know, explaining it helps me understand. So I was explaining this to them and it helps me understand what I'm doing. From my experience, the best way for me to learn is by teaching others. Because as you're teaching others, you learn more ways to explain something, increase your understanding yourself. This challenge is done for the day, which means I've got 11 or so challenges left for the easy ones which I can choose from and I need to decide which one to do for tomorrow. So I'm doing one a day. And it sounds like a lot, but so far for the easy ones, it doesn't seem too bad, but I know they're gonna increase in difficulty quite quickly. So hopefully it's not too bad, but we'll see how it goes. What I'm going to be doing is I'll upload one more day worth of time lapses like this. And then after that, it'll be you done weekly. So one per week. And then after that, for the last time, it'll be on the month. And that way I can review all the progress and everything that's been happening. So yeah. Thank you for watching. The rest of this video is going to be just the time of me doing the challenge itself. So feel free to watch, I guess, suffer. And then come to a point where I'm like happy because I finally did it. So thank you for watching again. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you tomorrow.